The following is a presentation of TFNN, live at TFNN, The Money Masters. The Money Masters. Welcome, folks, to the uh, Money Masters show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes. This is the uh, February 11th, Marvelous Monday edition. And uh, I absolutely do treasure your presence here today. And my outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that empower human potential. Why? Because, folks, you have got an amazing power within yourself. When it comes to your human potential and trading these markets, it's all about taking advantage of the tools that will increase your probability of success. And my mission is to help you achieve your success. This morning, we'll start with a quote from one of my favorite books, The Art of War. And it goes like this, folks. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a 100 battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Our call in number is 877-927-6648. We'd love to hear from you. Let's go take a look at the indexes out here. Let's start with the S&P. It's trading out right now at 15, 16, 11. That's down $1.82. The key number here to be watching today is 15, 14, 41. That is the high of the uh, trading session here of uh, Jobs Friday. That was February 1st. 15, 14, 41. That's the number you want to write down on your pad of paper. See where the S&P closes. If it closes back underneath that level, what Friday's session was about, and that was on a uh, candle uh, chart here. I, I have a, uh, a power chart, if you will, and that is goes from 1 to 10, with 1 being the strongest sessions and 10 being the weakest uh, sessions from a bullish standpoint, and Friday's session was a 4. So a strong session on Friday, regardless of volume, just simply the candle pattern out there. What the candle did do is it closed above a prior area of resistance. When you break resistance, old resistance should become new support unless this was nothing more than just a one-hit wonder, a one-day wonder, and a little bit of a breakout. So far in the trading session, the S&P 500 has gotten down to 14, 14, 63. Has not tested that level. From a bullish standpoint, your preference would have been to have seen it gotten down to that 15, 14, 41, maybe just a little bit lower and close above it. Of course, that's what you would be looking at for the entire trading session. It closed back below 15, 14, 41, and it's back inside the trading range. And really, it still has this 1.272 butterfly pattern out there. Has not broke. I would say a close at about the 15, 20 uh, level. The close on uh, Friday was 15, 17, 93. So we're pretty darn close. Would set up a, a breakout that price would want to travel higher. Where would it travel to? Well, if you just simply take a look at expansion patterns, it's one way to be able to measure uh, where price would normally expand to. It would be to the 1.618 level. What you're looking at here is 1.272 butterfly. 1.618 takes you out to about the 15. 55 range on the S&P 500, but one thing at a time. So that is what you want to be tracking here on the uh, S&P 500 today, the 15, 14, 41 level. If we go take a look at the uh, other indexes, let's take a look at the uh, composite. The composite, in essence, has completed its work. It's completed its work on Friday, got up to a high of 3196.89. The actual high from September 21st was 31.96.93. Missed it by, what, five cents out there? Actually, close enough for, for, for my work out here. Of course, it, will, it won't be a real rejection of that swing point until it closes back below the September 21st swing point. That low out there would be 31.7809. But in essence, you've got the composite here making what? Making a 100% move of a move. So you could say the work has been done on the composite. The work on the 1.272 butterfly has been done on the S. P 500. Let's go take a look at the other indexes out here. When I'm talking about work being done, I'm talking about normal patterns where you would see some type of reversal out there. Now let's go take a look at the Dow. The Dow has made a 1.272 butterfly as well. On Friday, the Dow was weaker than the S&P 500. In fact, the only index to actually break out and close above a uh, swing point was, well, the Russell 2000. I take that back. Russell 2000 and the S&P 500. If we take a look at the uh, Dow, 
uh, the Dow, uh, the swing point on the Dow is the high of February 1st as well, 14,019 out there. Uh, you had a, a test of that area on Friday, got up to 14,022, closed back below it. So that was a test of a swing point on lighter volume and price. You had a, a failure. You've got this 1.272 butterfly out here as well. So the work has been done uh, to the upside on the uh, Dow. That's your third index. Now let's go take a look at what is the uh, what is the uh, potential ace in the hole, or at least I thought it was from the bullish standpoint. But then I did some additional drawing this morning during one of the breaks, and what I can see here is that on Friday, what the NDX actually did was it made a 1.618 expansion of its most recent set of swing points. That recent set of swing points would be the high. Off of December 19th, that's at 27.13.39, all the way down to low, put in on December 31st, that was at the 29.58. If you take that number, if you take the difference between those two, multiply times 1.6 range and add it to December 31st low, the 25.98 range, that'll take you right up to Friday's high. So it made a 1.6, I'm going to blow this up a bit, maybe you'll see this if you're watching in on Tiger TV. If you are just listening on the radio or your mobile device uh, because you went to tfn.mobi, thanks so much for doing that. Remember, the archive of this show is on Channel 10 as well as you can get the live stream by just going to the homepage of tfn.com and over on the right-hand side, you'll see those three smartphones. Just click on that and this show will stream live to you. So you've got a 1.6 range expansion here. You'll see that the retracement off of the swing point high from September 21st down to the lows of November 16th, 0.707. It's kind of a junior, it's not kind of, it is. It's a junior Fibonacci number. Oftentimes if you're measuring between swing points or if I put the tool on my screen out here, it is also a, a, a a, no, a normal vibration out there. I forget what it's the, the square root of, but it's the square root of one of the Fibonacci numbers out here. If I put this uh, tool just uh, just for giggles and grins, of course, uh, you know what the real word was. Uh, you'll see 707. You can see it right back in here, back when we're taking a, uh, a look at retracements off of the May 1st high down to the uh, low in June during this little stair-step approach here. So you'll see 707 appear often. Now, what I was actually looking at was more likely because, and we'll take a look at the retracement from the swing point high from that September 21st level down to low on November 16th. Because we had the NDX close above the 0.618, it seemed natural that it might move up to the 2797 level. That is the 0.786 retracement. But having made in the 1.618 expansion, uh, the range really that you would have, you would be looking at the range of 2780 where it got up to on Friday all the way up to the 2797 level. So what will be key here in identifying whether or not this is the reversal pattern, and I would say the work is done here, the work could be done pattern-wise. What I had been thinking is the NDX had not completed a pattern out here, but that is not the case. There is a pattern completion because we're within a range, and that's really what you want to make sure that you're looking at. You want to understand your ranges. You want to understand expansions and contractions and swing points. You want to see the areas where things are moving together because that will give you the range, which is always the trigger is a reversal signal, a candle reversal signal. We certainly don't have that yet in the NDX. Of course, the NDX gapping up, getting above, and also getting above that little uh, island uh, reversal uh, pattern that was out here that formed on January 23rd. So, uh, you know, certainly it could move higher. We'll see today. We're looking for a reversal signal. Today's candle, not a reversal signal. Today's candles thus far is nothing more than a, a pause button. However, if you get a close below the open on Friday, that would be the level of 2761 out there. You will have a reversal signal and you will have another pattern completion in the indexes out here. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, well. The New York Stock Exchange, we know that has a island reversal pattern out there, so we're good to go there. Let's take a look at the Russell 2000. The Russell getting up above the uh, swing point, which was also a resistance area. That was the February 1st swing point. You had a, a nice bearish engulfing candle effect you had. The, what the Russell 2000 has had has had several reversal days, but yet it continues to forge forward. Uh, right now, if you uh, close below... 9 12 76 and it's a 9 11 38 the close on monday 
well, I'm sorry, on Friday was at 9.13.67, so it just closed just slightly above it. But it closed back below 9.12.76. We'll be back inside the bearish side of the uh, range out there, and you will have compl uh, pattern completion, in essence, really across the board in all the indexes out there. So the index was the one that uh, threw me for a loop. But that's why you want to make sure that you, you know how to identify swing points, and you want to take a look at expansions and contractions in between those swing points to see where things line up. Our call number is 877-927-6648. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, the uh, currency market out here. We're going to start here with the uh, yen. The yen gave a, uh, we're going to put a, a, a daily chart up on the uh, screen here first as we take a look at the uh, daily chart. Quite a reversal signal that the yen gave us on Friday out here. As long as the yen does not close above 94.04, that is the resistance area, the yen should begin to start making a retracement. That retracement in the yen, well, most likely, well, at least a dead cat bounce, that would be your 0.382 level. That's quite a ways to go. That's down at about the 87.57 level, but more likely 0.618. A 0.618 retracement take you down to 83.51. This is the level to key in on, though, is going to be, well, the two levels are going to be a pullback to 87.51. You can see the yen here is certainly an extremely overbought condition, and we did get nice reversal signals right here on Friday. Today's bounce, you'd want to take a look at what does that mean. That's why you go down into intraday charts just to see what is going on. If we take a look at that, we'll go down into a 30-minute chart. You can see as the low is being made here on Friday at about 3.30 in the morning on Friday session, on the 30-minute chart, the yen had moved into the oversold condition. Had to bounce higher. It did that coming into about 4.30 in the morning, moved back down. Now what it's done is it made, it's made basically a 0 0.618, 0 0.618. That's why you want to make sure that you are using those uh, Fibonacci retracement numbers. That's nothing more than going from the swing point high. That came in right here at 1 in the morning on December, I'm sorry, on February 6th out there all the way down to the low that we were taking a look at on Friday at 3.30 in the morning out at the 92.16 level. 0.618 just slightly above where I've got the, where it actually got to. We did get another bearish reversal signal though as it moved higher. That came in right here at 9 o'clock in the morning as we were coming onto the air. The Japanese yen here, it also got into where? It got into the overbought condition. Uh, that area is going to be worked off. The uh, yen here uh, continuing to gradually make its way down to lower price. Uh, if we go take a look at the uh, euro, uh, we go into euro land. The euro trading out right now, 133.640. Uh, if we take a look at this chart, this is going to make its way down to the point, at least the 0.618 level. That's a high, high, uh, wide ranging bar from January 10th. That is also the 0.618. That's right around 132, looks like 132.699, something like that. 132.700 out there. The euro below the 0.382 level, it'll go to the uh, next floor, and that is the 0.618 level also happens to be about the high. 132.700 exactly is the high of January 10th out there. We take a look at, uh, around the uh, world. We take a look at uh, the DAX here in uh, Germany. The DAX made its first retracement that was getting down to the 0.382 retracement. That was off of November 16th, up to the high put in on January 28th. Now all it's doing, in fact, if I put in overbought or oversold, let's go see where we are at. This has more room to run to the downside. Getting down to that 0.382 level several trading sessions ago on February 6th and just simply building some cause for lower price. That price will take you down into the 73, 70, we'll call it 73.20 level. 877-927-6648. Down back, backing off a bit here off 48 points. We'll be right back. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. 
Member SIPC. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back to the Money Masters show, folks. Uh, the Dow right now trading out 44 points. The uh, S&P out at 15, 14, 74, 15, 14, 41 is the uh, number to be watching for you. And I've got the S&P 500 on my uh, chart again here. And uh, during the break, one of the things that I did was I uh, overlaid uh, the uh, gold contract. That is the black, that's the dark, thick black line that you uh, see on the uh, screen here. And what I, what, I, what I like to do is I like to take a look at different correlations in the uh, marketplace. And I like to be able to find divergence because, you see, there's, there's hidden signals out there that you should always be paying attention to. And uh, one of those might be taking a look at uh, gold to see, you know, does gold uh, and the general market work in the uh, same direction? And if you take a look at the black line now, the overlay of the uh, chart now, it just so happens, you know, gold is uh, trading out at 16.50 right now, and the S&P is at 15.14. But you don't want to take a look at the position of the black line. The position of the black line on the chart is irrelevant. It's really more of a directional aspect to try to identify when you have divergences. Now, sometimes you have divergences, and they uh, and they hook up together. But if you were to overlay uh, gold on the chart of the Dow or the S&P, what you'll see is generally you've got both things moving uh, together from a directional standpoint. 
standpoint. That's really what I'm referring to. And this year, I'm just coming back back into the lows of uh, June of 2012, and you can see it works really, really well out here in identifying and moving along with the uh, general market out here. Now, it came a little unglued here, and this was between the time period of November 7th. Uh, all the way, you can see gold was uh, moving up and the markets were moving down. And eventually, uh, you had the reversal day on the uh, November uh, 16th level, and then you simply had the markets catch up to uh, gold. But then you got things uh, that uh, uh, really came a little bit unglued, beginning right here. As the market moved up on January 2nd, uh, that was, you know, after after uh, our, our government, our wonderful uh, politicians out there, in all of the uh, parties came together and put together a great plan and the market took off from there. Of course, gold didn't buy it. So the question is, is gold telling a different, well, gold is certainly telling a different picture out here. You had the markets move higher, you had gold pull back, then the market started moving higher and pulled back again beginning right around January 23rd at a little punch higher. You can see right now you've got the markets pulling back. Uh, but right now you've got a uh, correlation that is not normally there. I mean, you've got uh, gold pulling back. The markets have been traveling higher. And uh, the question is, which of these two is going to uh, win out in the uh, end? And I think there is truly a message behind what is going on in the uh, commodity complex out there. Uh, there are a lot of folks that are in the uh, camp that say that the, you can't fight the Fed. I, I get that. And uh, that the uh, markets are just simply going to continue to move higher because of the uh, printing of money out there. And if that's the case, then I pose to you, well, well, why isn't gold moving higher? Why isn't gold moving along with the uh, general market? Right now, you got gold at 1650. You know, in the uh, morning show, the 9 o'clock, I say the morning show, it's still morning out here. In the 9 to 10 o'clock show, uh, the very first thing we did was we opened up with uh, gold. We pulled that apart. But gold is certainly uh, giving us a, a signal out here. In fact, the commodity structure, if you go overlay charts on the commodity structure and you understand correlations that are normally there, you're going to see some divergences out here. And there are several different uh, uh, commodities where the divergences or or other things out there, other instruments, other financial instruments out there, where in the end it's those instruments that always point the direction ahead of time. Uh, there was a question that came in the den, if I would uh, redo or take a look at the Dow Jones uh, Industrial again. What I will do is first go back and take a look at this correlation. This is the General Electric correlation. This is the GE chart. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, uh, what you see here is in the upper portion of the uh, screen, you see that is the uh, line chart. I'm just looking at a line chart. Oftentimes when you take a look at correlations, I find it easier just simply to take a look at a line chart versus a candle chart out here. So I have both the uh, GE, which is at the top, and I have the Dow, which is at the bottom. What we're seeing here is significant. We're seeing a significant divergence in price. Now I'm really coming off of the October 5th high out here. Yeah, we know that the in the Dow price is up above the October 5th level, but GE is not. GE is not playing along. And why is that important? It's important because GE is always a great leading indicator as to the eventual direction of the market. And it is not, and, and the reason is, I, I presume, my assumption is the reason it is because GE's got its tentacles in a number of different things out there, both from a manufacturing, from a finance uh, standpoint. So it's a pretty decent bellwether of what is really going on. I don't know if that's it. What I do know is what to look for. And what to look for is divergence. When you see significant divergence in the past, it was always led to some type of correction, sometimes serious corrections out here. And that's where I think we are at now here. You can see GE declining downward off of October 5th and the Dow headed to the upside. It's just a matter of taking these correlations, going back on the charts, seeing if there is some type of hidden signal out there. There absolutely is on this one and many others as well. If you'd like to see all those hidden signals, just go test drive my newsletter, Mastering Probability. We'll be right back, folks. Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could 
could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insights subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The uh, Dow off 42 points right now. S&P off three, composite down uh, nine. And, and just uh, one more thing. Back on the uh, Dow, what you want to be watching for today is on Friday's session, first you had a, a rejection of uh, price and volume. The uh, Dow getting up over the uh, swing point high from February the 1st out there. That swing point high was 14.019.78. On Friday, the Dow getting up to 14.022.62, closing back below it. Uh, rejecting that level on price and volume. Today, the key to be watching is the close of the Dow. A close below uh, 13,944 in your 13,953 right now, and you'll have a, a bearish engulfing candle. Already, you've got a uh, uh, you've got a uh, 
a dark cloud cover candle uh, inside the uh, Dow. We had the same thing really on the uh, trading session after that February 1st gap up. That was the Friday, came back in on Monday. So the bears are certainly starting to uh, take their positions in here at normal resistance levels. In this case here, the 1.272 butterfly. Let's go take a look at the ETF indices out here. Let's uh, break it down inside the ETFs. We take a look at the uh, diamonds. Uh, if we take a look at the diamonds, the volume on that uh, January 2nd or in this case here, January 1st candle, I apologize, January 1st was uh, 5.2 million shares Friday, getting up over that on 3.5 million shares, closing back below it. There's your rejection of price and volume out there. If we go take a look at the uh, spies out here. The spies on uh, Friday closing over that uh, January 2nd uh, candle. The volume there, I'm sorry, January, February 1st. Got just a little dyslexic there. The February 1st level, that high 151.42, 131 million shares, up and over it on 103 million shares. So again, in this, in the case of the S&P, you're looking for a close below, above or below. You're looking, if you're bullish, you want to see a close above 15, 14, 14. Uh, you'd like to see a test of that area, a rejection of that area, and a close higher light volume or heavy volume doesn't really matter because that is setting up a potential support area. Close below it. Uh, close below 15, 14, 14, and you'll have the S&P back inside its uh, range. The SPIs, uh, let's go take a look at the uh, NDX out here, the Qs. The Qs, uh, let's go see if we've got the 1.618 expansion of uh, swing points in the Qs. We know that we had it inside the NDX, and the uh, Qs, we did not uh, get it, did not make it all the way up there on that same expansion uh, pattern. Uh, from the uh, Q's standpoint today, you get a little bearish uh, candle. The bearish candle, even though it would create a uh, a bearish engulfing candle, that would be a close below 67.64. You really need to see it close the gap. So the Q's today would need to close into the 67.37 number in order to really erase a uh, a support possible support area, and that is the gap up from Friday out there. If we go take a look at the small caps, the IWM, let's check in and see what uh, she is uh, doing out here. Uh, the IWM, uh, so far volume uh, this morning, 4.6 million shares on Friday, did 25 million shares. So you do have, uh, geez, you have about the same type of volume out there in the uh, small caps here uh, this morning. So nothing uh, substantial from a volume standpoint. We go take a look at uh, some of the, let's go back and take a look, we haven't taken a look at during this show, gold. So let's go take a look at gold and the silver out here. Uh, gold having on the 30 minute chart, that's what we have popped up on the screen here right now. You can see gold as it was pushing down, getting into that oversold condition. So on an intraday basis, all that gold is doing is what it's supposed to do, which is work off that energy level, like running a race, like running a marathon, and you run a marathon and you need to just kind of uh, relax just a, a bit here. So what we've got gold, doing is just simply moving sideways right now, working off that oversold uh, condition, I suspect, for gold to make a uh, run lower. Volume uh, so far here, uh, ever since we came into the 840 session, it's, uh, 30 minutes, how can that be? Yeah, 840 session, uh, uh, just in which where we had volume there, you had two 25,000 contracts here. Volume really not too bad as it just simply moves sideways here. But no real rejection, no bullish candles out here, so to speak of just yet. We take a look at the daily chart. Uh, the real key is going to be this uh, one point, uh, right about the 1641 level. It's a 1.272 expansion and a 0.786 retracement coming together. Uh, gold did get down to 1644. So, you know, it's, it, that's a, that's a, it's basically in an area of good support. That area gets broken. It sets up most certainly a run for the hammer low of January 4th out there at 16. 26. 1626 is where you're going to find a lot of information out about uh, gold, and I suspect the dollar. And uh, we will take a look at the U.S. dollar index. First, let's come back over to silver, see what uh, silver is doing. Still trading inside the swing point from January 28th. Let's go put this on a uh, short-term chart as well, a 30-minute chart here. And silver really doing the same same pattern that we looked at in gold. You can see getting down into extreme oversold territory. Now doing nothing than moving sideways, working that condition off as it is supposed to. That's just simply the EKG on an intraday basis of the uh, charts. Helps you to understand what is going on. If we talk about uh, the uh, daily, well, we did, did we do the daily? No, it's, uh, yeah, I don't recall if I did the daily. 
How about that? There's my memory. So I don't recall. So we're just simply going to do it. Trading inside that uh, swing point says that your next, your first real test inside silver is going to be, will it close below $30.74? That's that January 28th swing point out there. If it does, you've got the 0.618 enchantment, not that much further below. It looks like about $30.48 $30 out there. Uh, but most likely, you get a close below the swing point. I suspect that silver will come all the way down and test the January 4th swing point high. As gold is testing the low of that level, that hammer, I would suspect that we will see silver test the high at about $30.30 out there. If we take a look at light sweet crude, uh, light sweet crude on its way down to at least the 92.82 level. That is the 0.382 retracement. Uh, back in, taking a look at natural gas, natural gas really on its way down to the lower part of this descending top, descending top, this uh, descending uh, uh, price channel uh, that is out here. That is what it is now traveling in. You've got an A to B equals CD down pattern. That would look like this. That would look, uh, that would take uh, natural gas right into the uh, bottom of that uh, descending uh, price channel that it is now traveling into. We take a look at bonds out here. Bonds right now just really traveling uh, sideways. Uh, you had on Friday's session, even with the markets uh, moving just slightly higher, well, the S&P itself, uh, you had bonds just really move uh, sideways out here. Bonds continuing to gradually work their way up to the top of its range, its resistance zone, which is right in about the 146.15 level. Uh, if we take a look at, let's go pop in on an intraday chart, the ES Mini. So let's go pop in, and this is a 10-day chart, a 10-day chart, 10-minute chart out here. Uh, you can see as we came on the uh, air this morning, you did have a little hammer candle at about 9.50. So just before we came on the air, uh, this coming as uh, the ES Mini was traveling down towards that oversold uh, territory, you did get a close below that. That's not a, a good sign. Close below that with conviction, with volume. So you broke a hammer low out there right now. You do have it only broke it for that one candle. So the key area here, just simply on an intraday chart, it's going to be the low of that hammer, which is 1510.75 out there. You can see that, uh, give me a second here to draw this across the uh, line. No bullish, that was, that was the bullish candle. And that bullish candle with the closed blow, it says that the ES Mini wants lower price here throughout the day. Getting down into where? Getting down into oversold territory. So now all it's really doing is working its way off by traveling slightly higher to sideways. That's a more intraday 10-minute chart out here. Let's take a look at the 30-minute chart. 30-minute uh, chart, uh, this would be the first time that the bulls would show up. You had a little doji candle coming into 1030, coming out of 1030. If you do get a, a close uh, above 15, uh, 12 out there, you'll have a little bullish engulfing candle. But you've got uh, the 30-minute chart has got more room to move to the uh, downside uh, in the ES Mini out here. Uh, if we go take a look at some of these stocks here that are popping and dropping in the uh, market, let's take a look in on uh, Regenerin Pharmaceuticals. That is leading the charge to the upside. The ticker symbol there is R-E-G-N. That is up uh, 6%, $9.84 out here. Let's go see what this is uh, trading into. Uh, Regenerin Pharmaceuticals uh, gapping up here this morning. Volume-wise, 1 million shares as it uh, moves into an area of uh, resistance. This was a little, slight little gap down from January 14th, but volume there is 400,000 shares, so it's got no problem taking that out. Uh, the swing point is actually January the 19th. That has 835,000 shares. Uh, looks like, uh, and it's up above the uh, this little high volume bar, not wide price spread on December 21st. Looks like Regenerant Pharmaceuticals wants to make a run for the November 29th high, 188.95 out there. It's gotten up so far intraday to 182.59. Novo Nordisk uh, really struggling off 26 bucks this morning. NVO is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's go peek in on this. We looked at on this as the uh, market was opening. Uh, this thing has got a big volume so far today. Uh, in just the first hour and 14 minutes of trading, 1 million shares here. And that is trading into or well, it's trading into the uh, downdraft at 1.6 million shares. This is going to make its way back into the November 6th swing point level. That's got 2.8 million shares, right around 150.72 to 144.52 out there. Uh, Amazon trading off, Netflix off this morning, Pioneer Natural Resources down. Rand Gold, uh, uh, G-O-L-D, is off about uh, 3% here this morning. Let's see, what is uh, big percentage-wise to the upside here? You've got Diamond Foods. 
So we know that is most likely just a dead cat bounce. But let's go check in on it. DMND is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go take a look at this. This thing has had just has been crushed. Diamond Foods, uh, their peanuts certainly got crushed. This thing here, folks, uh, was trading at uh, ninety six dollars and thirteen cents back in September of two thousand eleven. It's at sixteen bucks right now, and it's off the bottom. Uh, it is running into a, a resistance level. Let's draw this across the uh, screen. So, and the resistance level being the gap down, that's going to be the black line, uh, horizontal line going across the screen here. This uh, equity last gap down, uh, we, well, the last gap, the gap that it's running into is the November 15th gap down, 2.75 million shares. The high there is $16.60. Uh, the volume on that day, has a little throat thing there. The uh, volume on that day, 2.7 million shares. It has some good volume here this morning. It's done 1.1 million shares in just an hour and 15 minutes. Let's go see, what is there any news on this? Uh, no news, just simply up sharply. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be tackling this equity uh, at all. Although, although you are having its, really, its, its first sign of strength off of the bottom, and it's had lots of uh, weakness. Uh, the nice thing about this sign of uh, strength is that uh, it'll likely get stopped at the uh, November 15th swing point high around 1660 and then come back to where it's broke out. That would be the uh, lows of Friday out there right around the $14.17 level. And if it does get back there, the question is going to be the swing point low on this with volume. Uh, the last one I would look at would be December 10th out there and that high is 14.15, 2 million shares. That is on Diamond Foods. Let's take a look and see how oversold this thing uh, got to relative strength here. Well, it's actually getting up to overbought conditions as it moves into an area of resistance. That's not a good sign, most certainly. You can see here, got down into the oversold uh, condition and just simply uh, went ahead and consolidated sideways in order to work that off. Right now, today, moving up towards the overbought condition. That is on Diamond Offshore out there. Let's go take a look at, uh, let me see what's going on inside the IBD stocks out here. I uh, got the new list of the IBD stocks uh, leading charge to the uh, downside. You've got Commvault Systems, that's the number six. You got Generac Holdings, uh, that is off a buck sixty. Open Table down a buck sixty four. To the upside here, uh, leading charge up to. Well, let me change. Hold on a minute here. To the upside, you've got Stars, Celgene, Duncan Brands. Those are the leaders to the upside. Let's go take a look at uh, Stars. S T R. ZA is the uh, ticker symbol. I have not looked at this equity, so let's go see what the stock chart looks like. STRZA. That is the uh, number 10 weighting. That can't be right. Refresh my screen here. There we go. Uh, that is the number 10 weighting inside the IBD 50 out here. So this is at all time highs out here. Uh, this morning, gapping up uh, volume wise 1.3 million shares. This had a uh, last time it had a Sign of strength at wide price, but on January 14th, but not really volume out here. Interesting. Let's put this on a, a longer term time frame. Let's actually put this on a, uh, see how overbought this thing is. This thing is in that extreme overbought uh, territory. Let's go to Max in uh, Houston. Max, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? I'm doing just fine, Steve. I was listening to uh, you earlier, and you were talking about the uh, potentially when you over. Um, you superimpose the Dow and the gold. Yes. And um, anyway, I was looking at GT, and I do have some uh, puts, uh, some um, uh, April 14th puts, I believe. Okay. Um, and uh, it looks like the stock is just going sideways, so I'm concerned that it's going to release that oversold. The RSI will continue to, you know, to decline just as it goes. So... It, it, is it a time to get rid of it and just cash out, or do you, does it look like? I, I think it's going lower. They're going to announce earnings tomorrow. They do. Okay. So if we take a look at GT, folks, that is uh, that is Goodyear Tire out here trading right now at thirteen dollars and sixty four cents. So on the on the uh, relative strength meter, it's neither overbought or oversold. In fact, it's right in the uh, middle at the uh, fifty percent line out there. So that is not giving you any information. Here, let's go see what it's actually traveling into. Um, you've got this traveling into this uh, January, December 31st date out here inside that candle, 3.5 million shares. As it made its way, as it made its way back on Friday, 5.4 million shares. Uh, Max, can you stay on through the break? 
Sure, I can. Okay. We'll come back with Matt from Houston. We'll take a look at Goodyear Tire. 877-927-6648. Dow's off 24. S&P's down one. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Great moments are born from great opportunity, and that's what you have here. The opportunity to answer the questions, should I buy or should I sell? Should I be in or should I be out? Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN, and I've produced a free report, Reading the Message of the Markets, where I'll teach you how to use a set of tools that will answer these questions. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com right now and download Reading the Message of the Markets. This free special report includes step-by-step -step video examples that would have had you out of the market before the crash of 1929, before the crash of 1987, and would have had you back in the markets buying at the bottoms. This set of tools works on all time frames and all instruments. This set of tools will shape your trading and investing future. Folks, this moment will never be here again. The only cost is not taking action. You were born to be a money master, and the time is now. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and order Reading the Message of the Markets. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back to the Money Masters Show, folks. Dow is off 25 right now. S&P is off one. And we're going back out to Houston to our man, Max. We're taking a look at uh, Goodyear Tire. So uh, right now, uh, Max, it's trading at 1364. Uh, do you have, uh, you've got some profit in your in your position right now, right? Yeah, uh, just, just a little bit. Just it, a little. It, it actually, um, uh, 
March 16th uh, puts. Okay. So you don't have yeah, yeah. You, you don't have enough profit here to uh, take your principal off the table and leave you with a uh, contract or no. two. Yeah. Okay. No, All right. No, All don't. right. So then let's uh, let's take uh, let's take because that would have been that would have been my uh, first suggestion. As we take a look at it, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the weekly chart first here. Uh, the weekly chart, just to see in a longer term time frame, was looking to see if it gave us any kind of information out here. And if we take a look at it, uh, we're, we're, we're not seeing any bearish candle on the weekly basis. On the daily, I see a few uh, as it had moved into the over uh, bought uh, territory. But actually, uh, right now, you've got one, two, three, four, five. You've had six weeks where it's just simply been traveling inside the uh, candle from the early part of January. And yeah. so that still is actually somewhat bullish looking. In fact, if this uh, were to uh, close uh, this week above 1439 on a weekly basis, you'd have what's called the rising three uh, candle pattern out there. And that's a continuation pattern to the upside. And that continuation pattern would at least complete the A to B equals CD up, which would be right around 1494, could even be a, a, you know, a bit higher out there. Uh, so that's the weekly chart isn't giving us any real bearish. It's not giving us any bearish information. It's not a, a bullish yet either, uh, because that pattern that I referred to as far as a rising three, it's a continuation pattern. You wouldn't play it until you actually broke above yeah. that trading session uh, of January 4th out there. But I'm uh, not seeing the, the bearish side of the uh, case out here. On the uh, daily chart, uh, the area that, uh, you know, bad news would test first would be the high of December the 10th. And that's uh, not that much, uh, you know, right now that high is 1318, you're at 1365. Yeah. You've also got this volume candle that should be a little bit uh, a little bit of a concern potentially. That's the August 1st level at 1260. you got 17 million shares. You know, what is working on your side is the candle from October 26th. That's 15 million shares. But that low there is 1099, and that low was tested. That low was tested with, with lighter volume, 3.9 million shares, and that low basically held. So the work to the actual downside, because that was that's your most recent high volume swing point down there, that level has already been tested and held. So it's really, this one, in, in, in taking a look at the chart, Max, to me, I think this one's a toss-up. This one's a coin flip. Yeah. And I don't know if you want to go, you know, if you're in a situation where, you know, you're break-even, you're at a coin flip, you probably want something that's a little bit better than that. Okay, but wouldn't the, if the market is about to turn, wouldn't that bring bring um, GT down also? Not necessarily. You know, I mean, it's a it, you know, it's a market of stocks out there, and yeah. I mean, it, it certainly can. But what you're you know what what you want to do is you want to just focus on reward to risk on the exact trade that you're in and stock chart patterns mm -hmm. on the trade that you're in. If the market turns, not every stock is going to go south. Yeah, I understand. You know, and in GT, right. and in GT, I would just say, you know, you've got auto stocks are pretty good. Uh, so you get Ford is good. The uh, uh, Auto Nation, I think, was pretty good. I think we've seen some pops in AutoZone and so forth. So, you know, I would just look at it. I would just try to stay in in the, in the time frame in the stock chart that you're looking at, uh, most specifically. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I hey, appreciate it. You bet. Thanks for calling. Folks, stay tuned. Uh, Basil Chapman is up next. And Larry Pesvento, Daryl Martin, David White, Ken Shreve, and the uh, Tom O'Brien Show, folks. And thanks so much for joining us. And always remember this, folks, and that's this. You have got an amazing power within yourself. And that power is so strong, it'll create a life of abundance, cure incurable diseases, build billion-dollar businesses, paint magnificent masterpieces, and most of all, create fantastic, loving families. Thanks so much for being a part of our TFNN family. Have a great day. I look forward to seeing you in the morning. Take care, folks.